Okay, um, this is a video uh, regarding the repair of a Black & Decker toaster oven. This toaster oven is actually a model 355, but the failure that it had is similar to failures on other models, such as the 200. And you can see here that this circuit board says TRO 200, um, this timer section is um, the same on several units. Now, what happened on this was that when you push on the start toast, it wouldn't stay down. And when I did an internet search, I could see that uh, this was a common failure for this toaster oven. And some previous people had traced it down to a Zener diode having failed. So what I did was, I pulled that Zener diode off the board. Um, and you can see here that I have it set up on the diode measurement for my fluke meter. And this is in the uh, breakdown direction. This should be 6 volts. It's a 6 volt diode. Now you can only measure the diode voltage up to two volts on this fluke meter, but it should be reading overload. What it's actually reading is about half a volt. And that's a sign that that diode has gone bad. Now, if I take a new diode. I was able to order some new diodes on the internet. So that is a brand new diode. And, and that's coming up with overload. So that diode does appear to have failed. Um, so I did solder in a new diode. And um, I can hook that up for one second here. Have to, um, just going to hit pause for a second. Okay. Um, all, all I've done is I've hooked my meter up to across that exact same diode. That's the new diode now that I've soldered into that position. I took the board out and removed the diode. Okay. Now. I have it set up to read voltage, okay, because uh, it's an in-circuit measurement. I'm not going to try to measure the, that same diode measurement on that. What I'm going to actually now see is whether or not this problem has been fixed. I, I've got this plugged in. Now I'm going to hit the Start Toast button. Okay, hold on. Yeah, I have to push hard enough. Now it stays in, okay? so. It wasn't doing this before until after I had replaced it, so this does seem to be working. And the voltage that I'm getting is 5, five volts. Okay, I'm not going to turn this off now because I don't want it any longer than it needs to be. Um, and that's a 6 volt diode, so under load, um, the voltage is down to 5 volts. Okay, now. Um, this uh, people had correctly identified this problem um, and I was trying to figure out and they have also some speculation about why this particular diode may be failing on the circuit uh, because of some transients on the line or what have you um, I, I did um, uh, make a circuit diagram I, I, I took a photo of the front and back side of that board and um, I, I converted it into a schematic just so I could try to see what's happening with that circuit. Um, this is a schematic, and uh, there's the Zener diode, the 6 volt Zener diode. It's used in a power supply, AC to DC power supply. Now, here's just a blow up of just that portion of the circuit. The line voltage comes in here. There is a full bridge rectifier. And there's the Zener. 
I wasn't familiar with this type of circuit. Uh, the, this does not have a transformer, so this voltage is coming in at 120 volts, RMS. And this is a six volt diode, so there has to be something to drop this voltage to get this voltage much lower. And basically what that device is, it turns out is this capacitor. This is called a capacitor power supply. It's low cost. And what happens is the impedance of this capacitor at, at 60 hertz turns out to be 1.7K. And that acts as a divider uh, the voltage against the impedance that's down here so as to drop this voltage down. Or actually, to well, you might also look at this as limiting the current that can go into it. The, the current is limited uh, 170 volts peak to peak. Current is limited to 100 milliamps now. When that current is going through there, if that diode, this inner diode can handle up to that amount of current, then it's going to clamp it at six volts. Um, at first, I didn't really understand the circuit. I thought that this 510K would completely drop the voltage to be too low of a quantity if you simply look at it from the voltage divider point of view. But that's an erroneous way of looking at it because of the full wave rectifying operation of the bridge which is very nonlinear. There's a plot of um, the two phases. So when the input circuit is positive, positive voltage on the line relative to neutral, current flows in this direction. And then when the voltage is in the other polarity, the, the, the bridge switches it so that this device is in the other leg. The current is still flowing with the same polarity through the load. And so what happens is, I have not simulated this or done detailed analysis, but my understanding based on what I've read on the internet here now is that the 1.5 microfarad capacitor, which has to tolerate a very high voltage, the full voltage, limits the amount of current that is available to go through the load. And that's, uh, the z still clamps it at six volts. Um, so I, I thought that was kind of interesting, um, and I just thought I would follow up with this little report. Okay, thanks.